Hello team, here we go. Uh, part three of our reviews of the times. We saw the present, we saw the past, we took a break, uh, went back to the 90s to, to, to practice the past. And today we're going to go with part three, which is the future. And um, whoever is watching this, there are three levels to today's class. Level one, being able to say anything in the future. Whether you use will, whether you use going to, you will be able to communicate anything that you have to in English. The future is probably easier than the present and the past, actually, in terms of grammar rules. Going to do, going to eat, going to watch, going to sleep, will do, go, will eat, will sleep. It's pretty easy. That's level one. Level two is the difference between you know, I'm going to try to do something and I will do something. That emphasis, that credibility that you have. So sometimes you, you don't want to be too serious about something in the future. And sometimes you do. You don't want to tell your, your boss, eh, I'm going to try. You know, so there are th these differences. That's level two. And level three, I'm going to introduce all the, the extras, all the different uh, ways of communicating in the future. Some of them you will never use. You'll probably never even hear. But team, welcome, and here we go. Introduction, like always. Uh, I got stuck outside on Monday. I, I was locked out. I went to the supermarket, and, and uh, when I came back, Patrice had left. I hadn't taken my key. So I wrote the introduction outside on the, on the steps. Um, some memes. And the warm up. This is just for you to see uh, where you're starting from. Make three statements, three sentences, three predictions about the future. Um, it's usually better to be about you, your year, but it can be in general if you want. And here we go, objective one. We are going to start with going to, because going to is the least, it's the least sure, the least firm, the least committed of the ways you can speak in the future. Remember, at the end of the day, your tone of voice and your body language will always be the number one factor. You can say, I am going to learn English this year. And I'm like, I believe you. Look at him. You know, he, you know he's ready for this. Uh, but from a grammatical standpoint, going to is the least certain. Um, humans, we, 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 we like to, to say things. We like to say we are going to do things even if we don't. It feels good. We are rewarded. As soon as we say, you know, I'm going to learn Japanese this year, you know, dopamine goes into your system. It's like an energy to make you, you know, help you learn that Japanese. So going to is the least committed. You would use going to talking to your friends. You use going to for intentions. You use going to for kind of loose plans. Um, a good reference would be if you don't have an exact date and time, it's probably a going to type plan. So we have a couple of examples here. I am going to start waking up at 5 a.m. No, no, I don't believe you. I'm going to try. Uh, I hate this. I hate the sentence in any language. You know, what are you going to do for Carnaval? Maybe you're, you're talking to your coworker, and, you know, just to, to, to um, over lunch. Yeah, what are you going to do for Carnaval? Oh, I'm going to stay at home. Oh, I'm going to go to Rio. So it's, oh, and also, guys, you'll hear this a lot in movies, gonna. Gonna is not a real word. It's a, it's an, abbreviation it's a, a pseudo abbreviation a fake abbreviation of going to be careful if you're speaking with your friends if it's an informal situation go crazy go nuts uh, but it's probably not the best word to use if you are in an interview if you're speaking with a client so be aware of that so going to it's used in daily conversations and it's the option that requires the least commitment number two we have will we use it for facts, um, and I don't mean like gravity, like this will drop. That too, but mm, I'm sorry if there are any, any Flamengistas out there, but it's the, the, that confidence thing. We will beat Tao Madrid. And it's like, no, you're not. But they thought they were. They, they, they believed it. So that will, it's like you're signing your name under what you're saying. There's a commitment attached to it. If you say, you know, your boss says, when will you finish the report? Oh, I will finish today. So it's, it's stronger. If you were to say with the same tone of voice, something with going to and something with will, the will would sound a little bit more believable. 
The second use is for spontaneous or reactive decisions, however you prefer to understand it. Just like we said that going to was for plans, this is for the opposite of plans. If I'm drinking some water and I knock it over, I wasn't planning on it, I will go clean it up. If the, the doorbell rings, I will see who's there. It's not something planned. So you're reacting to a situation in the present. It's spontaneous. Now, if you go to like an English site or maybe an English book, you might see that will is also for predictions. Personally, I don't believe in this because what will make something a prediction is whether you say, you know, I think, I believe, I hope. And you can say, I think my team will win. I think my team is going to win. It doesn't really matter. So I do not like my students to focus on this. Um, what makes something a prediction is when you put your, your thoughts behind it. I think this will happen. I hope this will happen. Uh, I get the impression that somebody will be fired this week. So um, you could say it the same way, you know, uh, I think somebody is, is going, to, it's going to be fired and it'll be fine as well. So it's those extra words that make something a prediction. Focus on this one. It's fact. It's firm. It's solid. You're committed to it. Or number two, the spontaneous reactive decisions. You can get through your whole English life with just those two. They're the, the main options you have. Uh, but let me introduce you to their baby. Their baby is the present continuous. And you might be like, oh, what's this guy talking about? It's just their present continuous. All right, let me explain. If I tell you I am playing soccer, you'll understand that at the moment, right now, I am there kicking a ball. In English, you can attach a time expression. I call it an anchor word because it pulls it into, it holds it in the future to make a present continuous statement into the future. I am playing soccer. It's now. But if I say I am playing soccer on Friday, if I'm playing soccer later, I'm playing soccer tonight, all of a sudden it becomes the future. I don't usually hear my students use this, but it does have a purpose. It's kind of the, that's why I called it the baby. It has the planning aspect of going to, but with the fact aspect of will. It'll usually have a very specific, explicit, time expression at six tomorrow next week in april it'll usually be specific while well, going to is more kind of open um and let's see the examples i left here the boss is arriving on friday so everything better be ready because on friday he's here we are watching the next john wick in the theater um, this is true we are watching it we've already told my mother-in-law that she will, will have to watch least because we want to see it in the theater. Um, if you tell me, I am going to watch a movie on Friday, like, yeah, nothing better appears. It's an idea. It's an intention. If you say, I will watch a movie on Friday, I'm like, okay, I believe you. You want to see Avatar in the theater before, before it's out. You know? Okay, I understand. But if you say, I am watching a movie on Friday, maybe you've already bought the tickets and you even got the popcorn combo. It's, um, it feels more in motion. It's, it's happening. Um, and this one, I, 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 here in Minas, uh, where I live in Brazil, we have a, a certain, uh, we are, we're famous for, um, ooh, what's the word? For not trusting things, for, having, for taking things with a grain of salt, as we say um, in English. And... This is a good example of this. If somebody were to say to me, what are you doing this weekend? I already learned, hmm, who are you asking? Do you need my car? Are you going to ask me to help you move? So what are you doing this weekend? It's more, it's more specific. Maybe it's a good thing. Maybe you have a barbecue planned and you are inviting me to the barbecue at your house on Sunday um, at, at noon. Uh, but what are you doing this? It's stronger than what are you going to do with this weekend, which would be just light. Um, over, over, you know, over lunch conversation. Oh, yeah, what are you going to do this weekend? Just, just to get people talking. Now, team, that's level two. That is what I want you to to really take from this class because that's what's most important. You have your going to for 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 intentions. You have your will. It's more firm. You can use it for for the spontaneous decisions. We have the present continuous, which is for a 
a a planned uh, meeting. You know, it's 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 something that is confirmed. It's real. It's happening. It's a it's a plan in motion. Now we're going to get into the bonus ones. You don't really need to use these. You can get through your whole life without them, but you might run into them. So let me introduce you. Present simple. You will see this in airports, in bus terminal, terminals, and like in Google Calendar. Um, the plane arrives at 8. The, 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 the train leaves at this time. It's usually pretty specific, and it's something that you could imagine inside of your calendar. Your, your cell phone would let you know about when it's happening. Um, in my experience, the place you will see this is the travel, traveler meetings. It's pretty much it. Um, the reason I don't say it's the most important is because you can usually use the ING form. The plane is leaving at 2.30. Um, there is that argument that saying the plane leaves at 2.30, it sounds like, oh, every day they leaves at 2.30. Uh, but if I... I'm organizing a trip with, um, I'm organizing a trip to, to Rio. And it's only this, it's, 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 a, it's a private van that we rented. And you can say the van leaves at two. It doesn't have to be something that happens every week, every year, every month at two. So you can use it like that. But I do agree, a student of mine pointed out, it does sound more like a routine, something that happens constantly than the ING form. Next up, the future continuous. I don't usually see any problems with this, just less common. It's a, when you want to emphasize an action. Yes, you remember those other two classes. When you want, when you want to emphasize an action at a specific point. Um, what will you be doing at 6.30? I will be teaching. And it's a pretty easy one because it'll always be will, always be be, and always be ing form. And I guess if it's a negative, it won't. I won't be working at, at 8. Uh, but it's pretty specific. We don't have many uses for it. It's, it's not that you shouldn't use it. It's just we don't usually use it. And the last up, this one uh, people will not like. Um, I'm guilty of this. 99% um, of native speakers are guilty of this. Um, but we use the, we should use this one, but we don't. If my boss asks me for the report, he asks me for the report, by Friday. And I say, I will get it to you by Friday. That is the way you will hear it in, in I, I'm not going to give you a specific number, but like almost every time, over 90% of the times, I will get it to you by Friday. Um, it will be ready by Friday. But technically it is wrong um, because you can do it by Thursday, by Wednesday. Maybe it's ready. I just need to give it to you. So the correct way, remember, when you hear the word perfect, what's the word I want you to remember? Before, it should be, I will have finished by Friday. I will have gotten it to you by Friday. And do not worry. Nobody says it like this. Um, I, if you do, I am sorry. I'm, I'm not singling you out. It's excellent that you are speaking correct English. But unless you're like doing like a TOEFL test or something, nobody will ever worry about this lack of hack. Um, it's, it's nice to use, though, to, to show you know your stuff. Um, that's it for our, our review of, of the tenses. Uh, we will get into the present perfect. I haven't decided when, but we will. And now this is a little game. This game is ideal. It's for three people, but you can do it with just two. Um, and it starts with this. Everybody has heard this metaphor. Are you an optimist? Is the glass half full or is it half empty? And it's up to you. But today you get to play both. And the way this works is the first person makes a statement. I am traveling to Rio on the 24th. The second person plays the pessimist and ruins it. But you won't go to the beach because it will be raining. And then the third person, the savior, is going to save the situation. However, you'll make new friends at the hotel bar while you're waiting for the rain to pass. So the first person makes a statement. The second person ruins it. The third person saves it. Um, there's two ways to play this. You can do it in a very light way, just to be practicing your English um, without much, uh, without worrying much about whether you use, you're using going to, will, present continuous. Or option two, you can be very, very precise with it, um, where you, you're consciously picking, oh, I'm going to use the present continuous for this one. Oh, this one's not that serious. I'm going to use going to. So you can do that as well. All right? 
Um, it's a fun game. It's a light way to practice the future. If you do it a couple of times, you will feel confident that you can say anything you need to in the future. Um, conversation starters, a couple of questions. I'm going to pick my favorite from this week. I've been picking random ones and the other ones, and it hasn't been going well. And we're going to go with this one. If you could ask one question about the future and have it answered, what would it be? Imagine if you came through a portal. I have time to answer one question. What would you ask? And some, some questions have dangerous answers, and the answer might influence your, your life. And that might be part of what you do for the rest of your life. So I, I would be very careful. But my question would be, what is the next, the next big technology? What's the next technology that will change the world? Is it AI? You know, is it 3D printing? Is it blockchain? What is it? What's the, 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 is it um, virtual reality? What's the next big technology? Because I, I would try to learn about it. I, I would try to get ahead of it. Um, so that would be my, my question for future job. All right. Uh, vocab appointment. Some of my students didn't um, really get it, but it's a, you could say that it's a social commitment. You can say a doctor's appointment, but right? you can have an a, appointment to meet somebody. It's kind of a formal, um, a formal meeting of another person, I guess. Um, and deadline. It's the limit when you need to do something. You need to do something by Tuesday, by next, next week, by the end of the year. Uh, last up, your challenge. Uh, for those of you who know the, the story of Romeo and Juliet, you might uh, recognize it. Uh, it starts in Verona, 2323. Thank you for reminding me, Mr. Diego, about Verona. Uh, there is a feud between two gangs, the Williams clan and the going to crew. The Williams clan's motto is, a promise will be kept. And they have vowed to destroy the going to crew dreamers with big plans for the future. So to make the situation worse, Romeo Williams and Juliet going to have run away and tension is high. So here are my three questions for you. How did the war begin? What is the world they live in like? What is 2323 like? And what will happen next? Team, there's some bonus activities here if you want to check them out, different ways to practice the future. But that is it. Um, like always, thank you, and I will see you next week in class.